Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Major General Gregory Anderson, the commander of the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry, welcome to the Change of Responsibility Ceremony. Today, Division Command Sergeant Major Nima Bobar will relinquish responsibility as the 10th Mountain Division Command Sergeant Major to Command Sergeant Major Brett Johnson. On behalf of the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry and Fort Drum, we would like to welcome Division Command Sergeant Major Mobar's wife, his wife Candy, and daughters Amira and Kira. And Command Sergeant Major Brett Johnson's wife Candace and his parents Bill and Sue Johnson. And a welcome to our distinguished guests in the audience today. The North Country Regional Representative, the Office of New York State Governor Kathy Hochul, Allison Webinaro. Deputy District Director, the Office of Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, Mary Jo Richards. Representative of the Office of New York State Senator Mark Walzig's office, Corey Grant. Former Mayor of the Village of Deferriot, the Honorable Janet Zandau. And a welcome to our 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry and Four Drum Leadership. The Commanding General, 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry and Four Drum, and the Reviewing Officer for today's Change of Responsibility, Major General Gregory Anderson and his spouse, Lou. The Deputy Commanding General, Support, Brigadier General Matt Brayman and his girlfriend, Andrea. The Deputy Commanding General, Operations, Brigadier General Kendall Clark and his spouse, Veronica. The Chief of Staff, 10th Mountain Division, Light Infantry and Fort Drum, Colonel Rich Satterland. The Commander, U.S. Army Garrison Fort Drum, Colonel Matt Meyer and his spouse, Laura. The Garrison Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Jeremiah Larson and his spouse, Eva. And finally, to all community members, commanders, sergeants major, and men and women of the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry and Fort Drum in attendance today, we are honored that you have joined us. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Mrs. Candy Mobar, spouse of Command Sergeant Major Mobar, is being presented a bouquet of pink roses thanking her for all of her support and devotion to the soldiers and families of the 10th Mountain Division. Pink roses signify the bonds of loyalty and affection between the soldiers and families and to signify our sorrow at their departure from the 10th Mountain Division. They will be remembered and missed. At this time, Candace Johnson, spouse of Command Sergeant Major Johnson, is receiving a bouquet of yellow roses, welcoming her to the 10th Mountain Division. Yellow is the color of new beginnings and symbolizes her arrival to the 10th Mountain Division. In time, the rosebuds will blossom, as will her relationship with the soldiers and their families. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Baron Wester and remain standing for the posting of the colors and the playing of the national anthem. Let us pray. Oh Lord, thank you for your presence with us as we gather for this change of responsibility. Turn our hearts and thoughts towards you as we consider your many blessings, knowing that every good and perfect gift comes from you. Among these, we count Command Sergeant Major Mobar and the tremendous care and service that he's devoted to the soldiers and families of the 10th Mountain Division during his time here. Return back to him and his family a hundredfold all that he has given to us. Lord, I pray also for Command Sergeant Major Johnson. As he assumes this responsibility, be at his side, granting him all that is necessary for the road ahead, and bless the soldiers and families of the 10th Mountain Division under his leadership. In your holy name I pray, amen. The non-commissioned officer in charge for today's change of responsibility ceremony is Sergeant Major John Emery. The ceremony will begin when the NCLIC commands the units be brought to attention. Bring your units to attention. Brigade, attention. Garrison, attention. Brigade, attention!
present. Conduct the change of responsibility ceremony. Bring your unit to present on. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Bring your unit to order arm and parade rest. The change of responsibility is a simple yet traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The key to the ceremony is the passing of the colors. The very soul of a military unit is symbolized in the colors under which it fights, for they represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers. The custodian of the colors is the command sergeant major, who is the senior enlisted soldier in the unit and principal advisor to the commander. Non-commission officer in charge, Sergeant Major Emery, will pass the colors to Division Command Sergeant Major Mobar, who will in turn pass the colors to the commander. The passing of the colors symbolizes the relinquishment of responsibility and authority from Division Command Sergeant Major Mobar. The commander will then pass the colors to Command Major Sergeant Major Johnson, charging him with the responsibility and authority that comes with his position. Charge orders for Command Sergeant Major Brett W. Johnson. Let it be known from this day forward that the commander of the 10th Mountain Division has placed special trust and confidence in your patriotism, dedication, integrity, and leadership abilities. Therefore, you are hereby appointed as the Division Command Sergeant Major of the 10th Mountain Division. Division Command Sergeant Major Johnson will now return the colors to the non-commissioned officer in charge. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 10th Mountain Division, Major General Gregory Anderson. Okay, everybody, uh, climb and glory. To our distinguished guests and North Country friends and teammates, please accept my thanks for your support and for being here today. 
I would like to also, at this time, personally recognize the Mobar and the Johnson families and thank them for their years of loving support, acts of service, and leadership to our communities across the Army. To Candy Mobar and the Mobar girls, Amira and Kira, and to Candice and their sons who can't be here today, Kevin and uh, Tyler, and to the extended Johnson family, uh, thank you for being here and traveling up here to see this. I, I always tell you, the greatness of our Army is our people. You can just see here on the field uh, if you need uh, evidence of that. And our people come from great families. So thank you. This is uh, your accomplishment, and none of this is possible without your love and support. A change of responsibility ceremony is an important event. It marks the point in time where the responsibility for the division is officially handed off from one sergeant major to the next. It's a chance to reflect on where we have been the past two years and where we are going. It is a chance to honor the service and sacrifice of the departing leadership and to welcome and receive the new team. Changing out command sergeant majors is a real honor for me, and in this case even more so because of the deep respect I have for both of these leaders, and also because I get to see my beloved 10th Mountain Division cared for by one great leader in the most amazing way, and that it is now in the caring hands of another distinguished leader. Most of you already know my position on non-commissioned officers. I would not be here today without them. I probably would not be alive today without them. And I certainly would not be the officer nor man I am without them raising me, challenging me, counseling me, and believing in me. NCOs must, must, must own our Army, and it starts here in the 10th Mountain Division. A great non-commissioned officer and Command Sergeant Major William Bainbridge once said this about the NCO Corps. The goal of the Corps of NCOs whose duty is the day-to-day -day business of running the Army so that the Officer Corps has time to command it. Again, that goal is to continue to improve our Army at every turn. We want to leave it better than we found it, regardless of the kind of unit you're in it ought to be an elite outfit because it's NCOs that make it so. And that is true. A unit can only be elite by the efforts and determination and choice of her non-commissioned officers. Sergeant Major Nima Mobar has achieved this and more as Mountain 7. He is leaving this division better than he found it because of his efforts, energies, and his acts of service. Many of you know his favorite saying and personal philosophy, right? Established dominance. <laughs> Nima, you certainly lived up to it. NCO ownership and dominance is palpable around here. You see evidence of it everywhere. And it is catching fire across the ranks as new NCOs are made here at Fort Drum, or the new ones that come in, or the ones that return to the mountain. NCOs are once more becoming the technical experts in the application of violence driving change and challenging our growth and direction through action. Look at the, the gains that have made in fires, communications, how we do fitness and health, mountaineering, how we enforce and, and, uh, uh, standards and teach standards, our counter UAS, electronic warfare, what we're doing with nutrition, combating harmful behaviors, and all of the evidence is here before and, it's in, and behind every one of those gains are NCOs making it happen. The eight-step training model. We had trouble getting NCOs to own that. Nima Mobar personally went down to each battalion sergeant major and had them go through each of the eight steps scheduled out. And then those sergeant majors influenced the first sergeants all the way down to the platoon sergeants, the squad leaders, section leaders, team leaders. And now the eight-step model, we don't talk about it much anymore. It's just happening. Mountain Cares, that's our program, our policy to combat harmful behaviors. Nima Mobar surveyed the landscape here when he first got here and said, hey, we need leaders to own outcomes. We need leaders to own their soldiers and their problems and not manage a process, but manage outcomes to help them and take charge of it. And he drove that. And the numbers in the last six months are 
I mean, it would blow your mind. They speak for themselves. How we receive our soldiers is different. Our mountain and alpine heritage and how we look at it is different. In fact, you've got mountaineers, skiers in the outdoor industry clamoring to get in with our NCOs who are leading the way in mountain and alpine tactics and training. He revised the blue book. He stabilized our NCO Corps. He made the chain work. And while the division headquarters was deployed to Europe and the Black Sea region, Nima Mobar held this fort down and this division down and not just kept it afloat. He drove change, positive change in progress and growth. I've never seen it done better, nor have I seen more meaningful and positive change in such a short tour. Non-commissioned officers are grabbing a hold again and leading. It is our way, it's our heritage, and we need you to keep doing it. Nima, Candy, and the girls are moving to JBLM to take first corps in the Sergeant Major position, the Command Sergeant Major position for the Corps. He'll move the needle forward again. It's perfect. It's what our Army needs. There's so much to be proud of, and I know that I am proud to have served in this great mountain division with you. Thank you, Ranger Buddy. Growth and change and development is on track, and it's not going to come off track. Based on the exceptional non-commissioned officer taking over responsibility for it. Command Sergeant Major Brett Johnson and his spouse Candace, welcome to the mountain. Sergeant Major Johnson is coming to us from just having given up responsibility for the Ranger Regiment Sergeant Major. Before that, he was the CSM for then Fort Benning, now renamed to Fort Moore. I have known Brett Johnson for many years, going back to our time in the Ranger Regiment. And everything I have described to you about where the NCO Corps needs to go, he's lived it his entire career. He knows the way. There's no one else I could hope to come in and take the baton from Nemo Mobar other than Brett Johnson. Mountain 7. There is no job better prepared than the job you have just assumed. I'm excited to see where you're going to take the Mountain Division, and I'm grateful for your continued service and leadership and commitment to our Army. We need you. Our great Army and her Mountain Division are going to keep rolling along. How could we not? Our NCOs in, this, in these ranks, they demand it, expect it, they're driving it. It feels amazing. It is they that make us unbeatable in battle. Mountain NCOs and soldiers, never, never stop climbing. Don't stop for anything. We'll meet at the top. Climb to glory. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Nima Mobar. General Mrs. Anderson, General Nauman, General Brayman, Ms. Jensen, uh, Brigadier, Brigadier General Mrs. Clark, uh, the Honorable Joe Butler, Colonel Satterlin, Sergeant Major and Mrs. Johnson, and the Honorable Gray, command teams, friends, and families, good morning and thank you for attending today's ceremony. Stephen Pressfield uh, explains in his book, The Warrior Ethos, about a fictional account of how King Leonidas selected the 300 Spartans that would face the Persians at the hot gates. Pressfield theorized that Leonidas didn't select them for their individual or collective skill. He didn't even pick them for their bravery. Leonidas specially selected his team based on the strength and courage of their wives because he knew how important the support would be to the mission. I wouldn't be where I am now if it, uh, in the Army if it wasn't for, uh, for my wife, Candy. Thank you for everything you do. Without your love and support, there'd be no reason for me to do this. Uh, you keep me grounded, you keep me sane, and you continually make me a better man. I love you more than I can express. And girls, we're off to the next adventure. I know you're, you enjoyed your time here in the North Country, all the new experiences, especially the you know five feet of snow at a time. Uh, you both learned and grew so much. I'm very proud of you both. Thanks for sticking with another move, and, and I know we'll enjoy our time in, uh, in Washington. A special thank you to the, the core leadership, General Donahue. Uh, thanks for giving us the room to lead and focus on the things that really matter. Sergeant Major Barker, thank you for uh, your even and calm approach. 
you're always available to offer good advice and assist uh, when needed. Uh, together, you've tr truly created an environment that people can excel in. To my peer SAR majors across the Corps and Fort SCOM, I appreciate your help, advice, and friendship. It has truly been a pleasure working with you all. Uh, thank you to my two executive assistants, uh, Sergeants Phillip and Hunt. You appre I appreciate everything you did for me, all the travel arrangements, uh, coordinating meetings, fighting off angry brigade sergeant majors, and the PT beatdowns that you endured. Uh, I couldn't have focused on my job if it wasn't for all of your support. You're both uh, terrific non-commissioned officers with uh, bright futures. Uh, Generals Brayman and Clark, or Crockett and Tubbs as they're known in the headquarters and across most of Europe for that matter, uh, you've done more than, uh, than most uh, know to, to accomplish the mission and look care of, uh, take care of our soldiers. Legendary basketball coach John Wooden is quoted as saying, a player who makes a team great is more valuable than a great player. Losing yourself in the group for the good of uh, the group, that's teamwork. And while you've been terrific players, you've been better teammates, and you've posit uh, positively impacted the lives of so many young men and women. Thank you. The book I spoke about earlier, War Ethos, mentions uh, um, that the War Ethos are taught. It goes on to say that they're taught on the football field in Topeka, in the mountains of the Hindu Kush, on the lion-infested plains of Kenya. Courage is modeled for the youth by fathers and older brothers, by mentors and elders. It's inculcated in almost all cultures by a regimen of training and discipline. This division has been incredibly blessed to have such a strong group of brigade sergeant majors that have instilled the war ethos and enforced standards and discipline. I can't thank you enough for what you've done for our soldiers and the way that you've led. While the division has been spread all over the world, you've professionally looked after our formations, executing your missions, solving problems at your level. Any success we've had can be directly attributed to your coaching and your focus. I've learned so much from you all. Thank you for making my job easy. It's going to be weird for a minute. Bear with me for this inside joke. But to the battalion star majors, thank you for your hard work and dedication. I know retraining could be over the top when discipline was rocky, but you all stuck it out, and none of you ex uh, hatched an escape plan, even though you thought I was mean as a cobra. You knew that you weren't expendable, but as valuable as a rhinestone, and I know some of you will have to Google that one afterwards, uh, but not to end on a cliffhanger. You're all specialists in your fields, as deadly as Rambo. You've lived the NCO creed and helped soldiers just like the Good Samaritan. So stay driven because you're needed on the home front. Sincerely, the Tulsa King. But on a serious note, it's been extremely humbling working uh, with such a talented group of battalion CSMs for the last two years. When we speak of the strides we've made in the NCO ownership, uh, we shouldn't look any further than our battalion star majors. You've built cohesive teams, mastery of fundamentals, and instilled discipline. It's clear to see in every mission the division has been assigned. Thank you for everything you do to take care of our most precious treasure, our soldiers. And next, I'd like to thank the division staff, led by Colonel Satterlin, who's always been there to help me knock down barriers. Mark Twain once said, do the right thing. It'll gratify some people and astonish the rest. You've always behind the scenes doing the right things to set the stage for mission success and to take care of soldiers. It's often thankless, uh, but without your thoughtful and diligent planning and coordination, we wouldn't have accomplished but a fraction of what we have. Especially want to thank the G3 Sergeant Majors, uh, Valentine, Wes, and Emery. I don't envy you, and I certainly couldn't do your job. Thanks for driving the division along the way and doing all the unfun stuff so I could be out banging in the streets with the Sergeant Majors, which is another inside joke. It's an extremely tough job, but you were the right leaders for it. I'm forever grateful for your hard work and your friendship. Coaching legend Lou Holtz said, winners embrace hard work. They love di the discipline of it. The trade-off they're making to win. Losers, on the other hand, see it as punishment. And that's the difference. You won't find a harder working division than the 10th Mountain Division. All across our formation, soldiers of the Blue Collar Division have been working hard, training, looking after one another, and accomplishing missions as the most deployed division in our Army. What you do matters, but how you've done it matters more. Time and time again, our country and Army has asked for the 10th Mountain Division. It's because they know what they're going to get, a disciplined, lethal, humble, and professional unit. From anywhere we've been sent, our soldiers for training, missions, support. I always receive calls and emails. Leaders stop me when I'm at conferences and, and traveling to tell me how terrific our soldiers have performed and how disciplined they were. 
We were able to accomplish all this because of our superpower, the non-commissioned officers. You're the ones training our soldiers. You're leading from the front, coaching them through life's bumps and bruises. Regardless of how shorthanded we are or the tools we're given, you're leading change in the division. You're setting the example for our young soldiers and leaving a long-lasting legacy. Thank you for everything you do and, for, and keep establishing dominance. A big thank you to our community partners, garrison agencies, and most importantly, our families. You've made this an incredible community and an enjoyable assignment. Soldiers and family members volunteered many hours of personal time to improve our community and unit. Our garrison team has kept the roads clear, the lights on, and helped train our soldiers and provide counseling and life skills to help our soldiers through the tough times. Our great H2F and nutrition professionals have helped to educate and prepare our minds and bodies for the rigors of combat we're so often called to. Our North Country partners have made the surrounding community a welcoming environment. You've advocated for our needs, been great neighbors, and been there to assist uh, or simply welcome us back from another mission regardless of the time of day or night. You volunteer your time to make our lives better and go so far as to send us reminders um, on every deployment. Every platoon in this division is sponsored uh, by our great uh, community here. Finally, you've been instrumental in moving us closer to Alpine roots and helped us stay connected to our illustrious history. Thank you for all that you do. And finally, I'd like to thank uh, General Anderson and, and Lou. You probably don't know it, know it, but Lou is always behind the scenes advocating for our families and making things better on our installation. Thank you for all you've done for our soldiers and for our family. Fame leadership author and speaker Adam Grant says about leaders, good leaders build products, great leaders build cultures, good leaders deliver results, great leaders develop people. Good leaders have vision, great leaders have values. Good leaders are role models at work, great leaders are role models in life. General Anderson, you've embodied this idea as you've led the division. You've never been concerned with short-term gains or unsustainable temporary fixes. You communicate and live in a very specific priorities and values, build teams, think critically, and focus on the fundamentals. This is exactly what you've done. You prioritize leader development over short-term results. You built structure to unlock the talents of the formation, produce collaboration, and gain efficiency. You've always given everyone in the room a voice. The structure, calm, and common sense you've led with has been fa the foundation of all the great things that this division has accomplished. You challenged me and the NCOs of the division to take ownership and run our organizations. And while an organization the size of ours sees constant churning and manning, I'm confident that we've instilled positive momentum and the lessons will carry over into all the formations across the Army. Thank you for having the confidence in me to provide intent and give me the space to lead in my way. It's been an absolute honor to serve with, uh, with you and our great division. Best of luck as you move on to your next assignment. While I'm sad to leave the division, I'm thrilled to, that you're receiving an upgrade. Sergeant Major Johnson, Johnson is an absolute terrific leader and the right leader for this job. He has a wealth of experience and an elite track record of performance. If I can offer you one piece of advice, uh, I've been giving advice all week, but one last piece of advice, uh, if I, I'll quote Teddy Roosevelt, uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Take care of our soldiers, and they will climb to glory. Thank you. Gentlemen, the division command Sergeant Major of the 10th Mountain Division, Command Sergeant Major Brett Johnson. General Anderson, thanks for your confidence in me. I promise I won't let you down, ne neither of you, uh, Mobar. Uh, I always got you up speed now. To uh, G General Nowen, thank you. I look forward to serving with you. It's going to be amazing. My wife, Candace, you've endured a whole bunch taking care of me, so I appreciate you as well, and I appreciate my family coming up here uh, from Texas and Pennsylvania, so thank you very much for, for uh, coming up to see us, and I look forward to the times we're going to have together coming into Dale. The, uh, for the protocol team and all the folks that put this together, I want to thank you very much. It's uh, pretty impressive to see the division out here, and I'm excited to start. To the soldiers of the most deployed division in the Army, thank you for continuing to stand the watch. 
for choosing a life that others would not. I look forward to serving our division in some of the most challenging times that our nation has to face. God bless you all. Climb to glory. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the 10th Mountain Division song and the Army song, and remain standing for the retiring of the colors. Oh. 